What's going on, YouTube? It is time for another Nero Stevo narrated Wi-Fi battle. Ugh, that 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 beginning there has something stuck in my throat. Hopefully, this video works. I have been having so many issues with the YouTube uploader and Sony Vegas lately. They just don't want me to put out a video. Apparently, I don't know what's going on. But today's match is a battle I had against Ben. I believe this might have been a passerby. I'm not sure. Uh. But I was using some weird things where I just wanted to test out Mega Obama Snow. So we have specially defensive Heatran, uh, kind of a weird bulky Obama Snow with a lot of attack investment. And then of course there's a Scarf, Rotom Fridge, uh, physically defensive Mandy Buzz, and offensive bulky uh, Grand Bull. Now starting off here, I could have set up my Stealth Rocks against the Walren, but I since I will be using the hail in this battle, I really didn't want him having access to too much recovery. I thought it would be way more important to go ahead and poison him, because Heatran is the only thing that I have that can toxic him. And I, I really didn't want to deal with wall rain stall tactics in this battle. Now I have an easy switch into Obama Snow here. Resisting the water move, I would not take very much from a possible ice move either, uh, which gives me a great chance to go ahead and Mega Evolve. With slower Pokemon sometimes Mega Evolving, uh, just getting from your normal form to your mega form can be difficult because you don't want to mega evolve at the wrong turn in the battle. But I have an easy opportunity here to do so. I thought he might go out into Muck, but I wasn't that worried about Muck because I didn't really understand uh, that Muck is just as good as I thought he used to be. So you're not to sleep on Muck. Muck will kick your grass, as my Muck is named. Now his Muck is actually a power a punch set. Uh and he gets the poison touch because Muck is just disgusting. Its toxic footprints are just really, really gross there. Uh, so that sucks that my Mandy Buzz gets poison. I guess it's better than toxic poison. It does hurt longevity. But I do have foul play, which allows me to um, take advantage of his attack boost. He misses the gunk shot, but it probably would have, uh, since he is clearly a little bit more bulky, as evidenced by the damage from the foul play there, he he would have probably done about half to my Mandy Buzz. And since there are there actually don't end up being any entry hazards to spell as doesn't end up mattering too much. Since I realized he was going to go for Gunk Shot, I decided just to switch out into Heatran. And I know that invites more power up punches, but I really thought I could KO him from that range with the lava plume. But I cannot, so Heatran has to take some un more unnecessary damage. And I was pretty sure that I was going to hit by a Shadow Sneak here. But I thought I could leave, live it even at plus two coming from Muck. But he yeah, decides to just probably go for another power punch. Uh, so that's okay. I'm able to finish Muck off there. I still haven't had an opportunity to put up my entry hazards. Electivire comes in, and I was expecting a fighting or a ground type attack, maybe cross, chop, or earthquake. And so going out into Spike the Gramble allows me to get the Intimidate. And because of the fairy typing, of course, I would resist the possible fighting type move. And a non-stab earthquake, with even without a life orb or a choice banner or anything, is not going to do much to a bulky Grand Bull. Now this is my fifth gen Grand Bull, so it has access to Heal Bell, which is nice because I can get rid of that poison on my Mandy Buzz. I figured he would switch into Flosion, but I don't really have anything good on Grand Bull to hit it with. Uh, since it's a fairy type now, I don't have return on Grand Bull anymore. Now he clearly expected me to switch up to Gabutops and Ghost for Swagger. That is going to be a recurring theme this battle because I do not want to try to attack through Swagger too much. Um, here I went ahead and I went for it be just because he had a Teflosion out there and Teflosion may have Hidden Power Grass, uh, but for the most part I would really only need Choice Bandit Kabutops to help revenge kill some things. And so that's actually the only time where I try to attack through the Confusion. Now expecting a Dragon type attack from Salamence, and also, just about 80% of the Salamence that I see are Scarfed. Uh, switching in Granbull is going to be a good answer to that, just because he can Intimidate it and typically take just about anything there. 
He does unfortunately knock me into the range where I have to use my Citrus Berry relatively early in this battle, but that's okay. Uh, it's going to be relatively simple just to switch out into Heatran here, even though that Play Rough did a great amount of damage, just to get the Flash Fire going. And once again, Tiflosion goes for Swagger. This Tiflosion is just really, really confident in its ability to do things. Uh, unfortunately, since Tiflosion is faster, I end up hitting myself in Confusion that turn, which stopped me from setting up my Stealth Rocks. I really wanted to get those up at that point. But, you know, I tried to set them up again, and I hit myself in Confusion again. So this is why we don't like attacking through Swagger, and this is also why Swagger is up for suspect voting right now on Smogon.com. Uh, my thoughts on that aside, 50-50s can be kind of annoying there. So I hit myself in Confusion three times. I tried to set up my Stealth Rocks all three of those times. I just wanted I just wanted one little pointy floating rock to, to just make this battlefield a, a little bit more zen-like. But no, I am not afforded that opportunity, apparently. That's okay though, I really thought he was going to switch out from Wall Rain there, which is why I went for Volt Switch instead of Thunderbolt. But that's okay. Uh, I can easily switch into a Bomb of Snow once again, even if he wants to go for the Ice Beam, maybe predicting a switch. Not a big deal. He went for Encore, actually. Maybe expecting me to... I don't... I don't... Maybe Trick? Or... will o -Wisp? I'm not really sure what he expected there. The Electric move seemed kind of obvious to me. But here I expected him to switch out because last time I used Wood Hammer, and he actually stays in, so I over-predicted a little bit there. But fortunately, Obama Snow is at a point where now he's just going to get a lot of HP back from the Lead C just because Wall Rain has a lot of HP. So I'm still able to take out the Wall Rain, get a little bit of HP back there. And here is where having the Stealth Rocks would have really helped because it would have limited the, the Tiflosion switching around so much. I figured the Swagger was coming, which is why I went out in the Mandy Buzz, and I just get kind of demolished by that Flamethrower there. I'm happy he's not using Fire Blast where he would have been able to 2 hit Kaomi. And then we have the Swagger afterwards so of course if I use foul play it'll use his attack stats so no plus two boost but you know I I hit myself in confusion again so uh, not having a lot of luck with that in this battle he actually ends up going for flamethrower one more time and I did not want to switch anything in to a flamethrower at this point now I have of course Obama snow I have grand bull and I have my Rotom Heat Form, of course, but none of those re uh, Rotom Fridge Form, but none of those really want to take a Flamethrower, so I end up letting it go down. I could have switched in my Kabutops at any time there, but I really didn't want to risk the burn. As many times as I was hitting myself in confusion, risking getting burned by Flamethrower on my basically my one real good offensive uh, priority move at this point is not a good idea. Now he predicts my switch out into Grand Bowl this time and just goes for Steel Wing. And that's going to work out for him, even with the Intimidate, I'm able to go down to two of those. Which, eh, that's, that sucks that I lost Grand Bull now here in the endgame, because I really like Intimidate. But, I am able to check Salamence quite easily with Ice Shard from Obama Snow. I actually expected him to switch, but I didn't know what to, so I just decided to go for Ice Shard anyway. And... I failed to kill the Typhlosion after two of those, so he's actually able to take me down with a Flamethrower. And this is bad, because now I'm down to just my Banded Kabutops and my Choice Scarf for Rotom Wash. He has Salamence and presumably Mega Gardevoir left. Uh, so kind of a, a battle of the attrition here. The one good thing about Mega Abomasino going down when it did is that it gave me three turns of hail, I believe, instead of just two, or possibly one, which not only means that I can finish the Salamence because I'm Scarf, but also I can put some good damage on the Mega Gardevoir here. Of course I'm Scarf, so I will outspeed. Blizzard actually does a pretty good amount, um, and then Rotom's just general bulk allows me to live that Moonblast there. He probably is also running Timid over Modest, because that's a much more popular nature on Mega Gardevoir since it hits the base 100 speed. But that's fantastic, because now I just need to be able to finish him off with a Banded Aqua Jet, and his HP is so low that that's definitely going to be able to happen. So, uh, keeping Kabutops and and really just playing around, not putting it in situations where he might hit himself with a really high attack stat, or maybe get burned by a flamethrower, that turned out to be the best thing that I could have done that battle. So I really enjoyed that match, though. Lots of Pokemon on his team that I haven't seen much, and for me, Kabutops being my number two favorite Pokemon of all time, it's just fun to use. 
So I hope you all enjoyed this battle. And uh, thoughts on Swagger, Prankster, and Thunder Wave being used on especially Pokemon like Klefki. I'm, I'm interested to know if you all think that it should be banned or if it should be banned in some form, whether it's just Swagger or just Klefki or just Pokemon with Prankster who use Swagger or whatever. Interested to hear your thoughts. As far as I think, I just think that that type of playstyle, it doesn't necessarily incorporate the type of skill that most people think of when they think of competitive battling. I think that it does need a certain type of skill to use, even though it's luck based, but you have to know when to use it. Um, there are ways to stop it, such as taunt or, of course, magic bounce. Uh, it's not affected by it at all. Switching Pokemon with Lumberry into it, or even Pokemon that can't be confused, such as Pokemon with more weird abilities. Things like that are, of course, in elef uh, electric types, aren't affected by paralysis at all. So just, there are ways to play around it. I've encountered it quite a few times, especially with Klefki on the scene, because most, not most notably Klefki, of course, resists a lot of the priority that is used against the other uh, Pokemon there. Uh, and of course, Sableye is immune to things like Extreme Speed. So, while Klefki resists Extreme Speed and Brave Bird, I can see that being a little bit annoying. And uh, if a lot of people start using it, just I don't see that type of play being really useful for pushing the metagame forward because it just really comes down to coin flips. But at the end of the day, when you really break Pokemon down, it's a lot of coin flips. So, I can definitely see both sides of the coin here. And I'm interested on what you guys have to say. I would like to see more usage, I guess. I would like to see more data about the Pokemon using the swag play combo. P last gen, of course, it was mainly Lyperd. Uh, I think that's the only thing that we really saw that was able to utilize those things, but Lyperd is so frail that it wasn't a big deal. The big deal with Klefki, and to a lesser extent the other Pokemon, is that now there's been a change with the critical hits, and, and their bulk and their typing allows them to take a lot more hits, and and then you even have things like Scarf and Posture Ditto being thrown into the mix where it's taking advantage of the swagger that your opponent is trying to attack through and then the Imposter Ditto transforms and get access to that plus two boost. So we have some competing theories here and I'm interested to see how it plays out. I've, I've decided that I'm not going to ladder to vote in this one. Sometimes I shadow ladder just to get high enough to vote in things but we're not going to do that this time. Uh, but I do welcome all opinions in the comments so I'm interested to see those. I don't know when this video will be posted, just because I'm trying to get a video out uh, a couple days this week here, but whenever it goes up, expect another video on Friday, and I will talk to you all later. Bye now.